tell you what, my heart for reconciliation goes all the way back. I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. And the uh, civil rights movement really started in this area. So I can remember when I was 10 years old in my family room and the word came out across the television, black and white, that uh, the Dr. King was, was killed. And I remember the tears coming down my mom's face. And you know, I, I really had a heart for people and community, even way back then. But I really wanted to get a sense of really what was the situation. So as I grew up more, I began to understand more about just the, the incredible tension between black and white in our, in our nation. As a matter of fact, it continued with me. Uh, my family kind of laughed at me because I asked my parents if I could paint my room red so I could have it, the theme red, black, and green, which are liberation colors for blacks. So I, I was in, over in this area. My, matter of fact, I always, often tell a story that, uh, that my background was that I went to a black nursery school, a black elementary school, a black high school, and graduated from a black college. So I always say I certainly identify myself with a card carrying black. But along the way, something happened once I gave my life to the Lord. Pretty much uh, wanted only to hear from black, even pastors. I have preferred Fred Price to Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth Copeland. I mean, even in the things of God. But I began to realize that my hunger for God superseded my love for my culture or my blackness. And once that turned around in my own heart, then it really didn't matter anymore. I, I had a hunger and a thirst that was greater than just whether it satisfied my cultural identity. So over a process of time, mine wasn't immediate. It was a process where I began to realize that, that black and white really was not based on race. It's really based on grace. where I began to realize that, that black and white really was not based on race. It was really based on grace. And so out of that, I began to realize that God had to deal with me inside. And I realized that I carried a lot of inward prejudice for over the years myself, only because I'd been in an environment where it was mostly black. Then everything I saw, I saw out of a filter of black. Everything, uh, America, uh, background, slavery, Jim Crow, all the things that we've been through. And even when I can remember there are times that my parents would travel a lot, but we had the time just perfectly when we would go through South, like Alabama and, and Mississippi and uh, any of those Southern countries, areas. Why? Because you could not be there late at night and expect you're going to get gas and not necessarily be safe. So everything was all to bundle together in a cultural kind of web. But once I gave my life to the Lord, everything changed. My politics changed, everything changed. Why? Because I began to realize that the most important thing was my love for Christ, not my love for race. And so then the Lord really impacted me because then he said, you know, can I enter into a ministry of reconciliation? So now we're just not talking about a preference. Now it became a call. And at that point, I just began to really seek the Lord about how can I help other people that were in a similar situation that may have been bound to their race and bound to their culture and not mean and not hateful, but just felt like nobody really understands. But to actually get them through a process of real, true forgiveness, we, we got to start there. We gotta, it's just like salvation. You have to confess your sins. I had to confess, yes, I had some racial prejudice in my own personal heart. And then secondly, I had to ask the Lord to help me. And he did. He began to help me. He gave me some genuine friends that were multi, that were racially uh, diverse. And I realized that I was not bound to just a certain set of numbers of friends or a culture. And I really begin to seek out now something that was greater than ever before and was the pleasure of the Lord. I really begin to speak out now something that was greater than ever before and was the pleasure of the Lord. 
Uh, once I started forgiving, I realized that also forgiveness breaks those bondages, true bondages in my heart. I, I was the one enslaved, not outside slavery, but in, inside slavery. Why? Because I was holding on to things based on culture and history that was affecting how I filtered things presently or even as far as my future was concerned. But I really began to forgive and I realized that even though I might think that a person that was white may not understand my background, they may not understand the issues that I face, but I need to start off from the position of forgiveness. And this began toward racial healing. And once you go through racial healing, there's nothing like that. Where you really can honestly say that you understand that you love a brother, whether he's white or black, but you recognize we are the same blood. Where you recognize that we have the same father. And it is a big difference once you know the Lord, too, because it, re it really is not the same in the world. You recognize that he died for us all. It's not Jew. It's not Greek. It's, it's not black or it's not white, but we're loving the same father that created us all. And then you move from racial healing and uh, then you have to go to reconciliation, whether or not we really can be reconciled and love each other and walk together in ministry. Because we have a ministry, of course, vertically, but then he also says horizontally we have ministry of reconciliation together. So reconciliation actually becomes the goal of us working together, black and white, Hispanic, whatever the case, because we're all called of God together.